This is the new Electrostorm line from Aperture, along with some very cool accessories. This is a Cinity Gear News video, supported by B&H and CVP. Hey guys, Graham Mailer Sheldon here from CineD.com. Welcome to um, New York City here. Matrix City. Matrix City. Yeah. This is nice. Yeah, so I'm here with Brandon from Aperture, and we're just chilling on this park bench. We're about to talk about some incredibly exciting releases from Aperture. The reason I'm so pumped is because it feels like these products were designed for me and what I do. <laughs> so I, I'm excited. I want to be able to film outside at noon and, and use stuff. So anyway, let's dive right into it, Brandon. So what are the new, two, I'll start with the fixtures first. What's new for Cinegear this year? Yeah, so new at Cinegear, we are debuting for the first time ever our new Electrostorm series of lights. That's the Electrostorm CS15 and the Electrostorm XT26. So this is new naming scheme. So what does it mean? Um, the C stands for what it's always stood for, color. The S is uh, in line with our Amran 200XS type lights, so that's expanded spectrum. So this is a high SSI fixture, um, a daylight SSI of 86 and a tungsten SSI of 89, all within a 1500 watt output uh, full color light. And then the XT26, that guy is X like crossfade, just the same as our other bicolors in the past, but the addition of the T is for tint control because this also has a green chip inside there to allow us to do some green magenta work in there. Um, so that's a 2600 watt output fixture. So these are the brightest fixtures that we've ever had in the Aperture lineup and they're all in this new Electrostorm line. Incredibly exciting. Did HMIs just die today? Or HMIs done? HMIs are not done. You still got your 18K, you still got your 12K, you still got your M90, so you're still okay. But I think we're encroaching into a point where um, a lot of the mid-size HMIs, especially when you're working on like smaller putts putts, uh, you're able to kind of work around in a new system now where LEDs are, you're getting that advantage of LEDs where the color consistency, your color tunability, and the dimmability, which you didn't have with HMIs. Well, let's talk about the, the specifically the power supply. Uh, off the bat, a little larger than what we've seen from you guys, but some really interesting and, and one kind of hidden feature that blew my mind in terms of the movement. But yeah, let's talk about uh, power supplies. Yeah, so on the power supplies, both of these guys share a, the same shape power supplies, the same casing, and the same lamp head design as well. So a lot of these things are interchangeable, which makes the yokes interchangeable, which makes a lot of the functions interchangeable. Are the reflectors interchangeable or no? Yeah, the reflectors are interchangeable as well. On the power supply side, just like the lamp head, everything is designed to be IP65 and has every single connector you could potentially need. It has USB, it has DMX in and out, it has uh, two Ethernet ports, it has two DC inputs, it has an AC input for each one, um, and that's where it gets to be super interesting too. The CS15 is a 1500 watt output light, which means it's pulling anywhere from 1800 to 2100 watts of output, a power draw, depending on which accessories you have with it. So that's why we're feeding that with a 20 amp cable in the US, or 20 amp connectors. That's the one that goes perpendicular like this. Um, but we also have a 15 amp uh, down rated cable as well. So that allows you to limit the power draw, and limit the power output, but still be able to use it on a 15 amp breaker. And that same thing goes for something important like the XT26, because obviously at that point, especially in North America, you're surpassing that 20 amp breaker load. Um, so the, on the XC26, it's gonna come standard with a 60 amp Bates paddle. And then uh, we're also going to have a downrated cable as well for you to be able to use it on household outlets, but just a limited output. Um, in terms of uh, the motorized yoke, yeah. can we talk about that? Because that is the most mind blowing. I am very excited for this. This just means less climbing up sketchy ladders, staying on the ground. And in terms of the control of it from the power unit itself, yeah, so alongside the new Electrostorm lights, the reason why it's called the Electrostorm is because of the, the new electronics that we're building around this ecosystem. So that is in the A mount as well as in the yoke system. So both of the yokes on both the CS15 and the XC26 are removable, and you can uh, add in this optional motorized yoke that's compatible with both of them. This has 360 degrees of pan and 270 degrees of tilt control, and you can control that all from the control box. You can control it from Citus Link, you can control it from DMX, um, and it's supposed to allow for a lot more remote operation and no matter what situation you're using it in, especially when you're using it on tall stands, whether you want to just put this light in a condor and kind of leave someone down so you don't have to have someone babysitting it and panning and tilting it. Well, so I'm um, being able to control the motorized yoke from the power unit is very cool. You mentioned, of course, Citus. What does that look like in practice? Is it a little like kind of 2D joystick sort of situation in Citus? We still uh, have yet to final, do the final implementation of Citus because what we're showing here is just a prototype. But uh, we're going to be trying to make it as simple and straightforward as possible. Um, I've gotten a lot of feedback of people asking for keyframes for the pan tilt control as well. So I'm going to try and bring that back to the team and see what we can do. 
Now, what was the largest, uh, would you say, engineering challenge for creating such high output LED fixtures? Was it just, I mean, heat dissipation, just a guess? Yeah, heat dissipation is a big one. Heat dissipation as well as dimming are kind of two, two, of, the, two of the big things here. Um, heat dissipation, both of these units are liquid cooled, so they're using the new advanced liquid cooling system. And then alongside that, we dimming is, and heat dissipation are intrinsically linked. So the better low end dimming you want, you have to have your heat dissipation, your cooling be a lot better as well. So what we did is we spent a lot of time trying to advance our low end dimming functionalities here as well. So our specs are currently showing that, especially towards the low end, you're getting excellent performance in terms of the granularity that you get and actually being able to dim close to what is a true like lower percentage. G great, and beyond just simply output when you dim, sometimes, I guess in the case of the 1500 watt full spectrum fixture, you sometimes see a loss in just performance with the mix at lower you know, percentages, right? So you've been able to kind of tackle that unique problem? We've been working on that, and there are, there are definitely where areas where it can still use improvement overall in the technology and the whole sphere, but that's something that we've definitely optimized in this one, um, both in our low end dimming and in our just dimming throughout the range, and even in our high speed mode. We've been we're trying to expand the range of what we can do with our high speed mode, which is an analog dimming mode, versus the, uh, the PWM dimming that is uh, existing in most of our fixtures right now. Well, let's go to accessories. Uh, for now, I think it's the F14 motorized. That's incredibly exciting. And then a new spotlight, right? Yeah, everyone has been asking us for a 14-inch Fresnel for a while, and we're finally able to deliver because we're using a new proprietary A-mount. Um, that is a beastly, beastly Fresnel. It's a 14-inch glass Fresnel, and it's motorized, 18 degrees to 45 degrees, all controllable through the A-mount. So the A-mount, one of the unique things about that is it has contact points that allows us to transfer both data and power to the accessories um, so that we can control the focus of it from the control box, from DMX or whatever, and also power the motor that's, off, that's focusing and spotting the flood. Um, in addition, one of the other things that the A-mount can do, especially with those contact points, is also read the metadata of which accessory it has on the light. So for example, if I have a reflector on there that, dec that warms up the color temperature, because all optics will change the color, um, the CS15 in particular, because it is a full color light, can actually optimize and recalibrate to bring it back to the correct white point within a, a range of a margin of error. Um, it'll recalibrate it to that correct white point. And this XT15 will also be, XT26 will be able to do that as well, um, just with a little bit less uh, accuracy because it's not full color, uh, but it still has the capabilities to do that by knowing which modifier is on it. So cool. I mean, what, what Brandon's alluding to is, say, maybe a given reflector might warm things up, say 400 Kelvin or whatever, and be able to dynamically, ch the light knowing that and dynamically changing is so incredibly cool. What is the kind of, you know, you don't have to go into too many specifics, but overall roadmap for the A-mount, generally like things like soft boxes, lanterns, we can expect, you know, the usuals, I guess, in A-mount? Yeah, we're looking into expanding A-mount into uh, a soft box ecosystem as well, but also just primarily using it for um, us to make more optimized accessories for the products because these taking advantage of those contact points. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Taking advantage of those contact points. These are the first two electrostorm lights. I can't talk about too much about what's coming, but these will not be the last electrostorm lights. We're planning on making this a series um, so that everyone can buy into this new mounting ecosystem and this new technology where things are optimized for the products because while Bowman's mount has been great, it has provided us with some limitations that we're now able to overcome with A-mount. Um, that being said, but because we're using a dual mount system, both Bowen's mount and A-mount, the uh, CS15 and the XC26 are both able to use the new Spotlight Max as well. So it's not just the 600C Pro or 1200D Pro that can use the Spotlight Max, but also the XC26 and the CS15. So generally, you needed to move to a new mount because you just had needed a larger chip, and you just needed that real estate, right? I mean, generally? It was both larger chip, increased stability in the mount, but also the optimization with things like the contact points and motorized. So you're able to do a lot of levels of optimization when you move to your new mount. And uh, right now, we're trying to kind of bridge that gap between people who still want to be able to use a lot of their Bones mount accessories, but still want to be able to use the Spotlight Max, use their Bones mount soft boxes, um, but also moving into this new area where we're going to try and create uh, accessories that can really take advantage of these new systems. Very, very cool. Okay, so we, have a, we mentioned a couple products. Um, pricing and availability, maybe we start with the Electrostorm lights. I don't have pricing on everything yet. That has probably been the number one question that has been asked. We're looking at an early Q4 availability, if pushing it even sooner if, we, if possible. So around then, that's when we'll be able to come up with uh, pre-orders and pricing. But I can't say anything right now, 
But I think uh, one thing that we can expect is that, especially for our rental house clients and for our high-end gaffers, that it's uh, it's going to be a step above what we currently have in terms of our price point and a step above what we have in terms of our quality. So I think those things are going to be intrinsically linked. And one thing I think it's important maybe for us to mention is, you know, you have the Electrostorm line now, I'm guessing incredible output, but often I'm using, especially a lot of your more recent high output fixtures at like three or four percent. So really consider what kind of output you need. We're, I mean, we're getting into a place where, you know, Electrostorms at three or four percent inside might make a lot of sense. So just keep that in mind. Of course, there's also the Ameren line as well. Exactly. I mean, the CS15, we're putting at comparable to a 1.8K HMI. For the XT26, uh, especially with the narrow reflector, the three different reflectors, you're getting close to a 4K HMI, about 80% of a brand new 4K HMI bulb. So you're, we're getting up there in terms of power, in terms of illuminance, and that's why we're also working really hard on being able to achieve better low-end dimming performance as well. And you really actually tune it down really low. But at the end of the day, we're dealing with bigger fans, we're dealing with liquid cooling, so you're going to obviously want a smaller fixture if you're going to want to take advantage of more silent operation. Uh, especially with the LEDs in the future. Very cool. Well, Brandon, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking some time with us here uh, on a city street to chat this out. And I mean, light storm, electrostorm, I, I can't wait to find out what other type of storms are coming in your future. Yeah, this, this product line is going to be big and I'm super, super excited. Cool. Well, that's it for us here at the Aperture booth at CineGear 2023. Stay tuned for more continuing coverage from the show. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.